Hello everybody, my name is Angela Bond and this is Plum Rose Publishing. I'm redressing this because I've seen some people doing this and they're not necessarily music teachers but I have seen music teachers do this, I've seen preschool teachers do this a lot and that is telling kids to shut up. Don't do this, please don't do this, especially the younger ones and you don't necessarily have to even say shut up to a kid because we all, most of us know saying shut up to a kid is probably the wrong thing to do even though I've seen it happen. But we see also that some people in the best heart, right, they might be a fourth grade teacher, a fifth grade teacher, a kindergarten teacher, and they say, um, be quiet, you know, John, be quiet. And what they're meaning is you have a concert, you brought these other teachers in, or maybe they're just sitting in, and the problem is that we're, I know what they're doing. They're, the person, the kid is screaming, okay? <laughs> or the kid is out of tune. But there's a certain age where they need to explore their voice. And uh, when you do that, and I've just watched this so many times, and I've had to, you know, sometimes I, now that I'm you know, a little different, I'll take them aside later on and I'll say, oh, let's just do this instead. But they'll, there's an instant from that child, like I've done something wrong, and we don't want them to associate singing with wrong. And so a child might be really having, feeling like they're a great singer or feeling like they're enjoying music. And so they're just expressing themselves, you know, especially the younger ones. Now, when they get a little older, they're a little bit more, they know about this. But you still don't want to tell them to shut up, but you, they're a little bit more knowledgeable. But this child uh, doesn't know yet that it's not a singing voice. So this is a teaching moment. So you can come up to the, or the class, like you don't single them out. And you say to the class, after the song finishes, so like don't do anything before the song finishes, finish the song up and then say, you know, what is this kind of voice? And they say, it's your whisper voice, you know? They say, it's my whisper voice, but they don't know. Whisper, that's my whisper voice. What is this kind of voice? It's my screaming voice. Okay. What is this kind of voice? It's my singing voice. Oh, okay. So, should we scream when we're singing our song? No, Miss Vaughn. Should we whisper when we're singing our song? No, Miss Vaughn. Should we sing when we sing our song? Yes, Miss Vaughn. Now, let's try the next song, or this song again, and use our singing voices. So that's a good way, a better way to say, let's use our singing voices and not scream. Then, after you've taught them the correct idea, then you can go ahead and you know, correct them and say, was that your singing voice? You know, Johnny, was that your singing voice? And they can make the self-correction. They're assessing their, themselves, well, no, Miss Vaughn, that was not my singing voice. <laughs> and if it was their singing voice, if they're so out of tune that you feel like there is no hope for this child, okay, listen, I've had a lot of children and students and even when I was doing private lessons, adults, who thought that they were out of tune, I mean, it was ground zero. And, but I was able to teach them how to be in tune. You need to start doing the ear training with them early, so you can use bells and different kinds of things for that. I'll have more videos about how to get that process started with them when they're out of tune. But I, I really want to thank you for listening and again, if you would like these tips, subscribe. I also have a website, plum-rose-publishing.com. You can check that out and see if there's resources there for you. I have my books and everything so that you, there's a ton of resources. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye.